So yeah, so so all these different areas, right? You go from visceral fat, very easily to mobilize. So it's very easy to lose. Then you've got you know the deep abdominal fat, a little bit harder. Upper abdominal fat, a little bit harder. Lower abdominal fat, a little hip and thigh fat, the hardest. Yeah, I'm very curious about why it is so hard for uh, to lose that uh, last bit of fat. Because I got to say, um, I'm actually pretty ready, but it's just my legs and it's frustrating, yeah. you know? <laughs> so there's a number of things going on, right? So back in the day, we just thought of like, okay, there's body fat. And now we divide it. There's visceral fat, right? That's the stuff that's kind of deep around the gut. And then there's subcutaneous fat. And that's the fat that's underneath the skin. But even that shows different behaviors depending on where it is in the body. And I don't want to get too deep in the weeds on this in terms of the details, but there can be differences in things like blood flow, um, how, how, how well that fat, that area of fat stores fat. More importantly, how easily it releases fat in response to hormonal signals. So, and, and they've done a lot of different stuff. Mainly they focus on kind of the abdominal area and the hip and thigh area. I think I found one study on women's breasts, but there's not a lot of research on that. And what you sort of end up finding is that there's this, this cluster of things where visceral fat is the easiest to lose. It's got a lot of blood flow. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very easily mobilized for energy. Um, it's very metabolically active, right? Which is part of the problem. If you yeah. carry a lot of visceral fat, it's dumping fatty acids into the bloodstream, which causes health problems. But if you start exercising and dieting, it goes away the fastest. Yeah, I mentioned it uh, when I just started uh, and I lost my like five first kgs. I have it on video as well on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. You don't see a lot of difference. That is Correct. very, and if you look, if I look at the, in the mirror, I think like, what is happening? Nothing is happening, but right. I'm losing weight, but got to trust the process. But what happens is, and I bet you can, you can, you experience this, you feel leaner. Like it's hard to describe if you haven't, like when you carry a lot of visceral fat, you just feel thick around the middle. Like it's just mm. that you're, if you poke, it's just really firm and you can't really suck your stomach in and do a stomach vacuum. And when you lose that visceral fat, which comes off first, there's not a lot of visual appearance. Like your waist may be a little bit narrower, but you just feel yeah. leaner inside. It's, you feel like it's a, hard. a little bit of a smaller person. Yeah, yeah, that's a really, you know, it's a, it's, a very, it's a very good way of describing it. And so once that's gone, then you, you sort of lose fat kind of from the top down, right? It's kind of inside out. And so what happens? Usually face tends to get a little bit gaunt and lean, mm -hmm. right? And if you look at like physique athletes at the end stages of, of dieting, their face looks frequently very unhealthy. Like the fat has just collapsed, right? Yeah. Their cheeks are sunken. It, it's not a healthy look. No. Um, you know, delts delt and pecs start to come in better than kind of ab abdominal area. And even in the abdominal fat, they have defined now there's a, so there's visceral fat real deep inside. There's a deep abdominal area that's kind of, then there's a superficial abdominal area. That's the stuff that we see. Mm -hmm. And then there's a superficial upper and superficial lower abdominal area. And they're all a little bit different, right? So you lose visceral fat, the deep abdominal fat, the upper abdominal fat, and then the lower abdominal, right? And, and as a man or even as a woman, upper abs always come in first. And then you've got that little bit of kind of a ring of fat around the lower area. You may have it on, you know, the obliques, the love handles, the low back. Excuse me. And then that comes in next. People in my, it's funny, on my forums or my Facebook group, guys, they'll be like, man, I've been dieting forever. And I'm lean everywhere, but I've still got this fat around my lower abdominal area. What's wrong with me? And I said, well, you're a guy. That's what's wrong with you. This is just the normal pattern for yeah. males. Now, women lose that way too, right? They lose kind of upper body. So their shoulders, pecs get ripped. They get this six pack that men would kill for. Because once the abs are gone, the next set, which is hips and thighs, which is the hardest to lose. Yeah. And for a few reasons. One, the blood flow is very poor. 
right? You put your hand on it, it's just, it's cold to the touch. It has very poor blood flow. It can store fat somewhat easily after a meal, but more importantly, it's very, very, very hard to mobilize fatty acids out of the fat cell, right? And if you can't, if you can't get, if you can't do that, right, that's kind of the, the first critical step to lose fat. So you have to get the fatty acid, the fat out of the fat cell. Then it goes to the bloodstream, and then hopefully it goes into the blood where it can get burned by heart, liver, muscle, whatever. But hit lower body hip and thigh fat is the hardest to mobilize in the first place. And if you can't do that, you can't lose it. And it's all hormonal. And like I said, I want to, there's, there's articles on my website about this. I don't want to get too deep into the details because it'll take too long. Yeah. So yeah, so, so all these different areas, right? You go from visceral fat, very easily to mobilize. So it's very easy to lose. Then you've got, you know, the deep abdominal fat a little bit harder, upper abdominal fat, a little bit harder, lower abdominal fat, a little hip and thigh fat, the hardest. Yeah. And it's just the biology of those fat cells. There's even differences in the types of fat, the types of fatty acids, different fat cells store, right? Because as it turns out, and again, this is just one of those little trivial fun facts, it's easier to get unsaturated fats out of a fat cell than saturated fats. Oh, for real. Yeah, like, I don't know if the difference is huge, but mo and like it's chain length and a bunch of other things. Well, yeah. stubborn fat tends to store more saturated fat. Because again, if you feel it, it's almost harder to the touch too, right? It feels different than other Definitely. parts of the body. Definitely. So it's cold. So it's, there's, all these, there's all these factors that are going into this. And now from a woman's standpoint, the reason, sort of the reason for this is that the hip and thigh fat is meant to fuel pregnancy if she becomes pregnant, because um, something I looked, this is over a decade ago. Once women like, I wanna say second trimester of pregnancy, but definitely into breastfeeding, women's hip and thigh fat becomes the easiest to mobilize. Something happens where it switches from being the hardest to get rid of to the easiest, right? Because you will talk to women and when they're breastfeeding, assuming they don't really, eat, even without dieting, they're like, oh my God, body fat drops off. My hips and thigh fat dropped off like nobody's business because those calories are meant to help support breastfeeding. And I spent about a year trying to figure out, okay, can I, can I mimic this somehow? Is there some way I can manipulate this hormonally or nutritionally or whatever to try to mimic what happens in breastfeeding? And I couldn't get anywhere with the project, so I gave up. Um, because, but, but, so, so that's what, now in men we might ask, okay, why? Why would a man store fat down there? I, I don't, I can't think of a good reason. I think it's just one of those, something happened early in development or early in biology, you know, like I said, could have been when your mom was pregnant, yeah. field development, you know, there's a big concern with, you know, estrogenic compounds in the environment that can cause all kinds of, like, I don't know why it happens. It simply does for some men. And so for men, again, your upper body will come in gray, but just like a woman's body, your hip and thigh fat is going to be the most resistant to loss. Yeah. Now that said, I'll say one more thing and I'll let you talk. What I found when I've prepped people, women that had that pattern, is what will happen, right, is for months, nothing, or it'll go down a little bit, right? Their upper body just shredded. Yeah. So it's always been one of the ironies, right? Men want a, a six pack and have shredded legs. Women want shredded legs and have a six pack. And each one wants what the other one has. And yeah. thus, thus the balance of the universe is maintained. Each one would kill for what the other has. But once that hip and thigh fat starts to move, like you get to a point that there's nothing else to lose. So either you're, that fat's going to come off or you're going to lose muscle. Those are the only real options left. So when that body fat does finally start to move towards the end of a woman's diet, and here we're talking about, you know, 15% body fat and, and below for women, yeah. like 10% is about the low limit for women, we're which is about the equivalent of 8% in a man, right? Most guys, they'll get to 10, 12% and still not have a full six pack. By the time you get to that sub single digit level, that's, but when the abs start to come in, they come in fast. And it's the same yeah. thing in reverse. The women will get there and it's like, man, not a lot of change. And then boom, like overnight, they start to see visual changes. Um, 
but they have to get pretty lean for that yeah. to happen. And but let, it's, let, harder di it's harder dieting than most people want to go through. Yeah, and let's just say that um, I'm at the latest stages. Um, yeah. My cardio is high. Um, my steps are high. high. My knee, uh, my, knee. Uh, my calories are low. What would you recommend to uh, get that last bit of fat off? Would you like, because I am like losing uh, the weight gradually uh, yeah. from the, because I'm already really lean. So is it okay at the last stage to get, to get the last bit of fat off? Do you think it's a good idea to go like really low calorie, like uh, protein modified sparing fast or intermittent fasting, some protocols that might work, or is it just calories in, calories out and be patient? <laughs> 